quite like this. Got a wee party of kids following me this morning. Morning, Holly. What a bee. Big breakdown. This is real working there. Morning. Today, got some fat cattle to take to the abattoir, so need to get that trailer off. Uh, that racking still needs to come off. Maybe this afternoon or tomorrow we'll start putting that up. Um, so I'll get the livestock trailer onto that. Right, we're on the hitch here. Just need to fuel up and put the livestock trailer on. Livestock trailer on. That pile of planings is about 500 ton. Hopefully those planings will get used very, very soon. That was a tricky one. There's one beast particular, the one that we tried to get in first, the massive one. It was a nightmare. 99% of the time, three cattle just follow each other into a trailer, but there was one that would go on its own and the other two wouldn't follow. So second time round, we tried to shut that in. There's a segregating gate. The beast was that big, well, we couldn't get the segregation shut. And we did not We did eventually, it was a lot of heaving and hoeing while the cattle beast is pushing and shoving back. Gavin Dunk back plowing today. Getting through a fair bit of plowing. We've got a couple of demo tractors coming as well, so we need to make sure there's a bit of plowing for them today. Just leaving the yard now. It's going to be a long journey because it wants to move that much and kick about. The trailer's just that amount of weight shifting. It's wobbly if you get up to high speed, so it's going to be a long one. Not very nice to drive when you get a fiery beast like that. Right, at the abattoir, dropped off the cattle. And Glad to get rid of that wild beast anyway. It came firing out the back of that trailer and pushed the gate out of the way. Ended up going down the wrong wrong way, but they had another pen they put it in. But I told them it's a wild one, just be careful. What happens is, as you're thin, thinning a group out, the wild ones always get left to the end because they're wild and you can't get, get them into the trailer. So they get bigger and bigger and you end up with a big wild beast right at the end and it's just, tricky. You should really early on try and force them into the trailer and get rid of them but you never do. Right back to the yard. I um, might go and get some racking done. Some of it up. Also it's an absolute corker again. There's a demonstrator just coming a class 650 I think. 184 horse. I need to find out the proper specs on it. Um, arriving just in 20 minutes or so so Kev's going to come down, we'll get the plough from it onto the, the cars. We've got it for a few days to play with, figure out, fiddle about with it, see how we get on with it. Anyway, racking is going in here, obviously it's filling up already. We'll clear this back wall, get some up there. Action. Dunk's obviously got a big stone down there, you see the fart lift? He's up with a plough, we'll wait to pick something up, there's the other one. Anyway, right, take these straps off and I'll get the forklift under this. Kevin replies, we'll get that on the demo. Yeah, it comes. It's quite a wee dainty machine. Smart looking, anyway. Right, just had a wee walk round of that tractor with a dealer. I'm um, just giving him a lift back. Um, 
So we're gonna have a play with it for a few days. So Kev's just yoking up to the plow. We're gonna go and have a wee mess about with it. I'll give you a wee kind of inside tour of it later. Obviously if we were to get one, the model would have all GPS ready, kind of probably go for a higher spec armrest and whatnot. Just kind of similar to what we've got in the new Hollands because we like it. It's only got 20 hours on it so far, so it's pretty much brand spanker. Okay, straight off the bat, it's quite small. Seems quite small in comparison to the New Hollands. It's only on 32s, no, sorry, 38s on the back. Uh, New Hollands on 42s. It's not got much ground, ground clearance. Obviously, 38s don't help, but even on 42s, I think it'd be sitting a good bit lower than the New Holland. This model's kind of missing quite a lot of bits and bobs that we would have on it, but it, they all they all do come that we would have, so don't really need to speak about them. The likes of spools in the front would come with it. We wouldn't get a PTO, we don't need a PTO on the front. Rams on each side of the front axle um, for suspension, which does help. I would say it's a smooth ride. You can see the cab suspension there, four-point four suspension. Um, there's your add blue, the step folds up to get add blue in there. It's add blue plus um, DPF um, in the engine bay, both kind of getting to the emission that, emissions that it needs to get to. Diesel tank, I think he said 375. He wasn't sure between 325 and 375 litre, which is a decent tank. So on the back end, the spools um, all have a separate release of their own, so you're not yanking at them to get them out. Um, air tank this side and that side. Um, air filter here, there's your other suspension mounts, two of them in the back, um, all colour coded. Uh, there's four spools on this, so you can get up to six, I think. Um, air brakes are standard. Um, these valves, quite handy ish, probably won't use them that much, but this side's for locking off the hitch and the drawbar. The two up here, um, I think they're for oil flow to the front. If you, oh, I can't remember. Yeah, yeah, you can set something on the front, lock it off, and then you get use of these valves, basically. Hitch, can't see really at all from the cab unless you use a mirror, which is on the, on there. So when you swing the window out, you can see down, which the mirror is actually quite good. I like that. There's your clever straw bar. That's basically it on the back end. A few other bits and bulbs. PTO spools and whatnot up here. You can add in more if you want. Up optional extras. Lights, there's loads of different options. These are just kind of basic. There's loads of different options. You can get more lights, you can get LED lights, you can, there's loads of options. As standard, these come, you can take them off, chuck them in the workshop and never use them ever again, or just leave them on. So that's around the outside of the tractor. There's a few other bits and bobs I've probably missed. You never remember what they all say, what the dealer all says to you. Um, I'll do the cab in the morning, once it's light but yeah, it was decent. I quite like this. Swing that open so you have battery access and also your toolbox is in here. There you go. Toolbox in there, which is a reasonable size, nothing crazy. Quick access to the battery, from hanging about. If you need to get in there, just shut so you can lock that off the key as well. This is just a relay and fuse box in there. So you could mount a um, toolbox on there if you wanted to. Fabricate something up, though you'd never get used to the door again. Quite an entertaining one. I'm just having a look in at the engine mate, and there is a loose nut. <laughs> a spare, must be a spare. Wouldn't have fallen out of anywhere, no way. Relatively compact engine bay or engine sits just in there. Such a John Deere engine, two, uh, 6 .8 litre. a 6.8 litre turbo there, actuator above it. I think, can someone tell me, is that a diesel particulate filter in the back there? That big cylinder. Oil pump fan, radiators on the front end there. Radiators have really easy access actually, it's quite a good thing. You take this pin out, take that back, same on the other side. Hold on, I'll just take it apart and show you. And you get access for blowing out all your radiators. Really good access. It's all also sealed off. Um, you can see the seal there, round about there. There's a channel that goes all the way around and whatnot. So only air that goes through that mesh gets in about these. So less kind of chaff and straw and whatnot um, can get up. There used to be a gap there apparently um, where a lot of chaff and whatnot would go and end up sticking onto the radiators and coolers and whatnot. 
airline on your steps, quite handy. Anyway, since I've been doing all that, poor coos are out of bail, so I'll give them a bail of ammonia straw. I need to bed them first thing in the morning, and then you'll see the cab of that at some point once I get around to it. <laughs> Cheers for watching. Right, that's everything for this video. It probably seems like I've done absolutely nothing today. I kind of have. Went down to Glasgow and back. Went a three and a half four hour round trip. And then messed about with a new tractor all day. <laughs>